Welcome back to another game design video. This is the second video in the Suica game series. Today we'll be looking at different physics systems in Suica games and discuss the pros and cons of each. This won't be overly technical, I'll just be discussing how things work by observing them in the game. I'll discuss this from the perspective of making a 2D Suica game, but the concepts here will be useful in other types of games as well. This will be from a perspective of working in Unity, which means the 3D physics are in NVIDIA PhysX, and the 2D physics are Box2D. The first major choice you have for physics systems in Unity is whether to use 2D physics or 3D physics. My game Suica Shapes uses 2D physics, and the reasons for that will become more clear over time. Suica game for the Nintendo Switch uses Unity's 3D physics system, which will be obvious if you try both Unity's 2D and 3D physics. I started to add a modifier to Suica Shapes that lets me try the game in either 2D or 3D physics mode, but I've only set it up for a handful of shapes so far. Let's compare circles on 2D mode and circles on 3D mode in Suica Shapes, but before that, a quick aside. A common misconception about Suica game is that there are different shapes in the game. In reality, every fruit in Suica game is just a sphere, and the sprite doesn't match the sphere perfectly. If you're fooled by this, leave a comment, I'm interested to hear if it's as common as I think it is. In 2D mode, everything is about what you'd expect. The circles are stable and don't move around a whole lot. Their movements are predictable and repeatable. You could increase movement by changing the friction values, but circles being extra slippery would have some weird effects when combined with other shapes in the game. If we now compare this to the 3D version, it's obvious that shapes in the box are more dynamic. Shapes will often slowly slide and fall rather than getting caught. The shapes all feel a bit bouncy and elastic. This is good for some reasons, and definitely has its charms, but there's a somewhat major drawback of this mode. Shapes after merging get launched away very often, and even out of bounds, instantly ending the game. In an old browser prototype of Suica Shapes, people would complain about this a lot, even though the same behavior is in Suica Game too. In Unity's 2D physics, when shapes depenetrate, they will depenetrate just enough to where they are no longer overlapping. However, in the 3D physics, an outward force is applied continuously until the shapes are no longer overlapping. When they stop overlapping, any velocity the shapes built up while depenetrating will persist afterward. Low mass shapes that were overlapping for a long time can get launched really far, but even heavier shapes can get launched sometimes too. What can we do about this if we want to use 3D physics? There's actually a variable called max depenetration force in the physics settings that you can lower. Lowering this might prevent shapes from depenetrating properly, or at least make the process slower, but we can get away with lowering it a bit, which should prevent some of the launching. Another variable that can help give the Switch Suica game feel is changing the time fixed time step in the project settings. From what I can tell, it appears that Suica game just uses the default value here. Fixed time step is how often a physics update happens. If you lower this number, there will be more physics updates per second, and the physics interactions will resolve faster. Suica Shapes uses a value of 1 over 144, or 144 updates per second, while the default is 1 over 50, 50 times per second. This is why when you drop a shape in Suica game, it seems to go through the floor sometimes and come back out. It all depends on when the physics tick happens, though. Let's take a look at the 3D collision resolution in a test scene that I made. So far I implemented seven different shapes in 3D from Suica Shapes. One thing to note here is that primitives work the best for collision resolution, so circles and boxes should basically resolve without any problems. Primitive just means a basic shape that the engine provides for me to use, and triangles are non-primitives in 3D, which means I had to make a mesh collider with a set of points and triangulation data. The T-shape and hexagons were made out of boxes, so they are similar to primitives, but they don't work quite as well. As you can see, in 3D a lot of the shapes end up partially inside of each other, and the ones completely inside of each other often don't resolve quickly or at all. Increasing the deep penetration force didn't seem to help a whole lot here. Keep in mind this is basically a best case scenario, as I implemented none of the more complex shapes and Suica shapes yet. Personally, shapes getting stuck inside of each other like this doesn't really match the quality standards that I want to aim for. Aside from deep penetration velocity, adjusting the default solver iterations and the default solver velocity iterations might be helpful at the cost of more performance. 
Now let's take a look at 2D physics with all the shapes and Suica shapes. I use mostly default physics settings. The collision resolution is far more aggressive, but rather than adding velocity to the shape, it's more like they're getting aggressively moved to where they no longer overlap. A couple of shapes do require a little bit of hard coding to get unstuck. For the most part, the physics engine handles all of the deep penetration. The biggest limitation of this method is that I cannot use complex polygon colliders. When testing making an oval, for example, if there were about 9 or more points, the ovals would get stuck inside of other shapes in weird ways. Here are a couple of cursed shapes that aren't in the game. Stars and ovals. I don't think this actually takes a lot of commentary to point out why this wouldn't work. There is a way to fix this if you're willing to have some really weird physics as a trade-off. You can turn up the uh, Baumgarty scale in the Baumgarty time of impact scale, or however you say that, very high, and then you get a physics simulation that looks like this. Shapes will violently jiggle until their physics resolve, and any time their physics is disturbed after this, everything in the box jiggles violently again. If you don't use high Baumgarty values, shapes will just get stuck inside of each other and not resolve. A couple examples of games where I've seen this happening are Whale Game Online and Hokkaido Game, where they have lots of small, sharp details on shapes. My last note on physics in 3D is that choosing a correct friction value does not seem easy. You can set a dynamic friction, static friction, and you get to choose how those combine. Optimally, I want players to be able to push shapes around by dropping them into each other, but I found that at a lower friction, rectangles and squares would just move on their own to one side or the other when it looks like nothing is pushing them, and slightly too high values would result in shapes not moving at all when they're pushed. In 2D, the friction interactions are a lot more consistent and make a lot more sense. Shapes can be pushed around effectively, and they also stop moving when it makes sense to. In summary, 2D physics allow for some more interesting shapes because of its more stable simulation, and there's more predictable behavior from the shapes, making it feel like more of a puzzle game. The trade-off is that it can feel less dynamic or juicy. If you use 3D physics, shapes might get more stuck often, shapes will push into each other in unpredictable ways, and it will be a common occurrence for shapes to shoot out of each other with a high force. The benefits are that the funny ways that the physics resolve can be exciting for players as long as they don't get too upset by the shapes getting launched out of bounds or shapes getting stuck inside of each other. If you're interested in testing the 2D versus 3D physics in Suica Shapes, the 3D modifier will be in the next update with the first 8 or so shapes. Suica Shapes is currently on sale for only a few dollars, but it's a cheap game when it isn't on sale anyway. Links to all the games discussed in the video are in the description, and thank you for watching.